Good day to everyone. For this video, we are going to discuss the crime of espionage as defined and penalized under Article 117 of the Revised Penal Code. Article 117, Espionage. The penalty of prison correctional shall be inflicted upon any person who Number one, without authority, therefore, enters a warship, fort, or naval or military establishment or reservation to obtain any information, plans, photographs, or other data of a confidential nature relative to the defense of the Philippine archipelago. Or, number two, being in possession by reason of the public office he holds of the articles, data, or information referred to in the preceding paragraph discloses their contents to a representative of a foreign nation. The penalty next higher in degree shall be imposed if the offender be a public officer or employee. There are actually two ways of committing the crime of espionage. The first way of committing the crime of espionage is by entering without authority a warship, fort, or military or naval establishment or reservation to obtain any information, plan, or other data of a confidential nature relative to the defense of the Philippines. Now, what are the elements of this first way of committing espionage? Number one, that the offender enters any of the places mentioned therein. So, to repeat, the offender enters what place? A warship, fort, or military or naval establishment or reservation. Outside of those places, there can be no espionage. Second, the offender has no authority therefore, meaning the offender has no authority to enter any of the places mentioned. And number three, the purpose of the offender is to obtain information, plans, photographs, or other data of a confidential nature relative to the defense of the Philippines. Now, the second way of committing espionage is by disclosing to the representative of a foreign nation the contents of the articles, data, or information referred to in the preceding paragraph, which he had in his possession by reason of the public office he holds. Now, what are the elements of this second way of committing espionage? Number one, that the offender here must be a public officer. Second, that as such public officer, he has in his possession the articles, data, or information referred to in paragraph 1 of Article 117 by reason of the public office he holds. And number three, the offender discloses their contents to a representative of a foreign nation. Now, take note that unlike the crime of treason, the crime of espionage can be committed both in times of war or of peace. Now, in paragraph 1, number 1, there must be what? A physical entrance of the places mentioned. There can be no espionage if the offender does not physically enter. Second thing to remember is the offender in paragraph 1 must have the intention to obtain information relative to the defense of the Philippines. Merely taking possession of the plans, photographs, etc. without such intention is not enough or will not constitute the crime of espionage under the first way. Third, the information to be obtained must be in relation to the defense and not to the offense of the Philippines. Number four, it's not necessary that the offender actually obtain such information, plans, etc. It is enough that his purpose of entering the same is to obtain such information. And number five, the offender here may be a citizen, a foreigner, a private individual, or a public officer.
Please remember that in paragraph 2, the public officer must have possessed the information, plans, data, etc. relative to the defense of the Philippines by reason of the office he holds. And number two, the offender or the public officer to be liable must have disclosed such information to the representative of a foreign nation. These two requisites must concur because even if the public officer has in his possession information, plans, data re relative to the national defense, but he did not disclose the same to the representative of a foreign nation, then he will not be held liable for espionage. The representative here means the or refers to the official representative of a foreign nation, not just to any foreigner or even to a public officer of that foreign nation. An example of an official representative of a foreign nation is the ambassador. Now, there are other acts of espionage punished under a special law. The special law is Commonwealth Act No. 616. So, while in the Revised Penal Code, there are only two ways of committing espionage, in Commonwealth Act No. 616, there are actually 14 acts, no? 14 distinct acts of committing espionage. Now, let me give you a rundown. First is Section 1, no? unlawfully obtaining or permitting to be obtained information affecting the national defense. Here, physical entrance is no longer necessary. We also have Section 2, unlawful disclosing of information affecting the national defense. Then you also have Section 3, disloyal acts or words in time of peace. Then we have Section 4, disloyal acts or words in time of war. Section 5, conspiracy to violate the preceding sections. So, sections 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then, harboring or concealing violators of the law. Under section 6. And then, we have other unlawful acts in sections 9 to 14. Again, all of these are found in Commonwealth Act number 616. So there are, under each section, there are several ways no, of violating, for example, section 4. There are several examples there wherein if a person, no, let's, let's say, for example, willfully makes or conveys false reports or false statements with intent to interfere with the operation or success of the armed forces of the Philippines. That is that will be considered as a disloyal act. Okay? Disloyal act in time of war because that kind of act is punished under Section 4. And there are several ways there. No? In each of these sections, there are several ways by which the crime of espionage is to be committed. Now, is there a difference between espionage and treason? Of course there is. And what are the differences between espionage and treason? The first is, in treason, it is committed only in time of war. I already mentioned this. Whereas, in espionage, it can be committed both in time of war or in time of peace. And the second difference is that in treason, it can only be committed in two ways, whereas espionage can be committed in many ways, pursuant to or in addition to the Revised Penal Code, the espionage under the Revised Penal Code. There are other ways of espionage pursuant to Commonwealth Act Number 616.